We have made our way to Andy McCoy race cars here in Washington, Missouri, and uh, state-of-the-art complex. I got to tell you, maybe not quite as big as a couple that we've been to, but certainly it's finally a detail to places what we've seen. Andy, good morning. How are things going for you here? Uh, they're going great, Brian. Man, I tell you what, you have got a beautiful facility here to, and a, a lot of stuff going on as well. Yes, sir, we do. Uh, I really appreciate you guys coming out. But, yeah, we got quite a quite a bit of work to do for over the winter. First of all, you win the coolest table of the year uh, so far and uh, also the coolest backdrop of the year. Uh, that car was pretty popular with a couple different drivers, not only uh, the great Terry Coyle, but is that not the same car that at one time the uh, – the young man from DeMott, Indiana, was in or no? Uh, yes, sir. That's the one Jason Hamstra won the, the 2011 championship in. And then uh, behind that, Terry Coyle yeah. uh, won a championship down in uh, uh, Kentucky and, and outlawed door slammer rules. And uh, we ended up winning the World Series of drag racing with it. And the car was just a really good car. A lot of, lot of compliments on it. Terry's a really, really great guy. I mean, him and his wife both. You know, a lot of people don't, don't know that, that there are engineers at Toyota. I mean, way, 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 way up high in the engineering department. They're, they're really, they're mechanical and engineering geniuses. Yeah, they are. Terry's really smart. Uh, Terry's really talented, and so is Kim. Uh, they proved that with Terry Leggett. Yeah. And then uh, Terry's a really good driver as well. He's driven a lot of our cars. And uh, we're actually building him a new Chevelle, too. So yeah. we're, we're pretty excited about it. He told me at PRI he was getting pretty excited. First of all, tell me a, a couple of things. I know you're, you build a lot of bodies here. That's not your main function. Yet. Your main function is building complete turnkey race cars. But, I mean, you started with your 57 Chevy as one of your first cars. But give me the history of you in general in the chassis building business. Well, you know, I worked for, you know, Jerry Haas, Jerry Beckel uh, for, for many years. And then uh, just decided to branch off on my own to do pro mod cars. And with my background with my dad, you know, building street rods, street machines, and things like that, we always had a vision of being able to build different and unique looking cars. And that's kind of like what we bring to the pro mod is our bodies kind of have our own signature on them. Right. And the same way with, with our cars, you know, we really strive for quality, uh, uniqueness, uh, nothing that comes off the the table that is the same every time. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's a little bit of our background there. Uh, had a lot to do with my brother, you know, making us look really good, like the table, the backdrop, uh, the website, things like that. He does really, really good with us, and that kind of compliments, and it's all family. Yeah. So That's pretty cool. The duster body then was something that came along as well. There was nobody really doing it, so you couldn't buy it. So you just made a – started with a steel body, chopped it, channeled it, sectioned it, and did a whole bunch of things and put a lot of hours into one of those things and made yourself a, 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 a plug out of the thing. Yes, sir, we did. Uh, we ended up doing a lot of bodies in Pro Mod, yeah. and when we did the duster, uh, me and Scott, my shop foreman, and my dad, uh, Stan – we thought we need to do something different. We need to control our own destiny and, and do something different out there. And we'd already done the 57 with the clear carbon body and everything. Uh, so that kind of put us on the map with the pro mods. Right. Uh, but doing the duster, we really got to, to do something totally different right. and unique and design our own body. And when it came out, everybody loved it. And when Jason won the championship and, and Terry Coyle won, it, it really proved that it was a slick body and could right. run with the best of them. Right. So it worked out really well. Even Janice uh, really liked the duster as well. So then uh, I know there's some odds and then things in between, but then the Chevelle came along. And, I mean, the Chevelle has turned the pro mod drag racing world on its side. I mean, it's been one of the most popular things from – the Midwest, the East Coast, all the way out to Mike Bowman in the West Coast. Yeah, when we did the Doster, we knew that there were some things like anything else that you want to change or you would like to redo or you'd like to see different. Yeah. A couple of people thought that the Doster was a really big car. I mean, it really wasn't, but they just looked at it as a big car. Yeah. So when we thought, you know, my, my first uh, car was a 70 Chevelle that I went to high school in. Yeah. So I thought, ah, why don't we do a Chevelle? But the 69 looked 
faster and sleeker than the 70. So that's when we decided to do the, the 69 Chevelle and really, you know, narrow it up, get it small, yeah. make it really sleek looking. And with some of the help that we've had with some aerodynamic engineers, uh, some feedback from the racers, and then the, the talent that me and Scott and my dad have, you know, we really, you know, knocked it out of the park with the Chevelle, we feel anyway. Yeah, the PD fleet car is uh, probably the only car I would probably ever say, at least in uh, any of the sanctioning bodies, certainly the PDRA, that one best appearing car and doesn't have an inch of worth of paint on it. Things beautiful. Yes, sir. Uh, when we did uh, the car for Russell, yeah. Russell believed in us, and Russell was like, hey, I, wanna, I want the first turn key Chevelle from you guys. And uh, when we found out that Russell was going to own the car and Tyler was going to drive, uh, he originally came to me and says, I want it flat black with gloss black tribal flames on it. And I was like, Russell, that just, I, I'm, I don't know about that. And he says, you know, what would you do? And I was like, leave it with me, and I'll, I'll do you something up nice. Right. And so that's when we came. And everybody accused me of the 57 that when we did a clear carbon body, they're like, yeah, well, it's your car. You do that for yourself. You wouldn't do it for no one else. Right. So Russell's been such a great customer and such a great friend that it's like, hey, why don't we prove to everyone that yeah. we won't do it for ourselves. We will do it for another customer. And uh, so that's when we came up with the clear carbon Chevelle for, for Russell and for Tyler. Yeah. And they have absolutely loved it. They've loved the attention. They've loved the the fact of that it's unique yeah. and that it's different. You know, no one else can just pop in there with a clear carbon Chevelle. It's a beauty. I guarantee it's a beauty. I mean, uh, most of you know out there, I mean, I've been in the paint and the body business all my entire life, so I can tell you that um, beauty is only skin deep and there's not a bit of paint on this thing. A little bit of clear coat? Yeah. Because, because there are stripes on the thing and whatnot, and and uh, it has one best appearing car a couple of times. So, how about if you don't mind, we take a take a uh, run through the shop and take a look around. You mind? Yeah, sure. Come on back. We'll show you guys what we do and what goes on in the behind the scenes. Cool. Let's go back and look at some flat tables and look at some projects here at Andy McCoy Race Cars. You're watching PDRA TV. 